Hello, beautiful human. Thanks for clicking on our interview with Laura Murano. She's awesome. Me, it's her new record. It's out now. She has a new movie coming soon. She's going to release more music in January. We got a lot to talk about. You're going to enjoy it. If you have thoughts, leave all of them in the comment section below. We also have a podcast link in the description, and it'd be really cool if you subscribed. I don't know why I'm doing this, but uh, enjoy. Okay, bye. Let's do this. I Welcome. Can't, I can't believe we just talked about a dog biting someone's fingers off. Yeah, that's really, it's it's quite a visual I have in my head right now. It's making me sick, actually. You hear about that guy who, like, lost all of his limbs? No. Um, yes. You heard about that, right? How nuts is that from a dog licking him, dog a stray licking dog? licking lost all of his limbs. Wait. It's, like, very rare, I yeah. feel, oh. but, like... Whoa, 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 whoa. By Wait. the way, you can sit back and move the mic to wherever you want to be. Okay, like you fantastic. get comfortable. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I just lie on the couch. And just like <laughs> you could do that. I mean, good. People great. have. I stand up weirdly. <laughs> <laughs> no, you should, just standing on the couch the whole yeah, time. Can I just do that? I'm not really moving to that. No. Weird Tom Cruise thing. Wait, <laughs> so this guy who gets licked by a dog, how long after the lick does he lose all his limbs? I don't know all the details, do you? I kind of know the details. Is that okay, weird? Well, well, share I don't know. Them. Okay, I read this a while ago because it was like a hot minute ago because someone said this and I was like, no. Because um, I love dogs so much. I really, I'm literally going, leaving here to play with dogs. Oh, jealous. Um, so, yeah. Um, I guess that this guy who had had multiple dogs in his life and he's uh-huh. an animal lover, um, they think he may have retracted this from a stray dog. A stray dog licked him. Um, didn't bite him, licked him, and the bacteria, it's a very rare bacteria, but the bacteria that the stray dog had was like this bacterial infection. Uh-huh. Um, and so he started getting this crazy reaction from it and went to a doctor, and it was, I think it was like two weeks after, um, yeah. and went to a doctor, and the doctor was like, you have this bacterial infection and you're going to die unless you lose all of your limbs. So he literally had to amputate both his arms and his legs. Yep. That's crazy. I know. It, what, what? But it's like super, super rare. And it has super to like get in your rare. bloodstream. So he, mu- he must have had like some sort of like cut. Open cut or yeah. something. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. So don't freak out, Zach, because Zach's going to freak out and never no, touch I'm a dog a, ever I'm, again. I'm a hypochondriac. So I, oh, was, okay. I was already convinced that like I had to go to the doctor because I was like, I've touched a dog once. <laughs> um, and so Dogs in the past. Have they already have such a bad rap? It's a tough situation to be in. It's hard to find them homes. Like, this is bad press. Well, this guy says, I'm so sorry. The guy says he still likes dogs. That's a good totally. And that guy was like, really, like, he's kind of my hero. He was like, weirdly positive. I think you, I mean, positive. Positive. He definitely wasn't perfect. (laughs) Anyway, um, (laughs) by the way, Laura Morano's here. (laughs) What a great way to intro me. So this guy lost all his limbs. Um, hi, guys. Hey. I've been here for a hot minute. Thanks for hanging out. Thanks for having me so much. Seriously, this literally happened because Zach and I were at our friend AJ's book launch party. Yes. And we were like, oh, we're hosting the AMA's Red Carpet together, but not together. You're going to be in a different position. Yeah, you're at the, fine. You're at the back. You're at the, uh, you have a great position at the <laughs> end the of the back. carpet. It's you're- fine. <laughs> Zach has the prime position. It's Ooh. fine. I love my position. I'm very happy with my position. But Zach is like, kind of like like prime prime spot top of the carpet Mariah Carey here we come my hands are sweating like crazy you're gonna flip and kill it we have like we have days left and I'm freaking out he's so nervous you're just giggling laughing about it (laughs) I'm like it's been because I'm not gonna lie guys I'm kind of a pro um no but I've like weirdly been how many how many years how many years have you done the AMAs now (laughs) um this will be my third one wow yes which is um I'm like feel very grateful for it I'm like this is amazing I'm kind of upset with any like Dick Clark production show. So I was always obsessed. So now that I can actually host Red Carpet, it's like f- flipping awesome. Because they're the best too. I mean, there's um, there's nobody, there's no better team to do any of these shows. And they just, uh, it's been instilled in the company for like a century or something. And that's why Zach's like kind of freaking out, which I think is hilarious because I'm like, <laughs> you literally do this for your job. <laughs> and I'm like, seriously, you're, even if you didn't do this for a job, like me, I literally don't. Um, You're like the best hands. You're going to be great. Thank 
thank and it's you. on YouTube Music. It's really the, the best home, and I thank you for that because that means a lot. And we hosted a charity red carpet together, and, yeah, and it was a, we, so it was a little, it's a lot. It, it was, was a, a lot to handle. <laughs> but we did a good job, and you really are amazing because you've done the Billboard Music Awards too, and you, you had a show on Radio Disney. Do you still have that show? Um, I actually weirdly, um, it just aired. Well, I don't know when this is airing, but it uh. just aired today on Friday. Uh. Um, it, we're having kind of a spinoff show, so I have a new single out called Me, and I love puns. So it's not really a whole show. We're kind of doing just a few episodes, but it's called All About Me. It's also very narcissistic, um, <laughs> which I think is great. Um, uh, but yeah, so I, I weirdly in the last like two years have gone in this world that I'm really not in, like the hosting world, but I'm kind of like, oh, hi, but talking to people. That's cool. Everything to do with your personality. You're so bubbly. Your eyes are very welcoming. I talk about men who have lost all their limbs. Yeah, I'm like, <laughs> you're captivating right at the gate. You know what you're doing. <laughs> There's something about you that's like really infectious and you're very, you're, you're just kind of welcoming. Thank and you. You're great to play off of because you you always keep it going. Like you have to keep it going. I think that's I think the most sometimes, important rule. Sometimes to the point where it's not good. Yeah, like, we're, we're really not going, but you're still going. Yeah, yeah. Okay, so I'm in a restaurant the other day, and I have this thing where when someone I know someone doesn't think I'm funny, instead of just like stopping, I'm like, no, 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 I will make them think I'm funny. <laughs> and so she, the waitress like comes over, and um, I make a, I don't even know what I made a joke about, but I made a joke about how it's like lunch, um, but it's <laughs> dinner, but it's like, what is it? Is it, hey. is it litter? <laughs> is it dunch? And she's just Dunked. stone cold, like, just like, <laughs> cool what do you want and I'm like ah <laughs> oh, but like you know I am bet you are just not laughing outside because you're laughing so much on the inside and she's like uh -huh. um, what do you want and I'm like uh well you know I have a joke to tell you knock knock he's like, I'm like I just could not stop and we literally um never saw her again we got a new waitress I'm not that's, even joking that's hilarious I know and I'm like wait <laughs> I'm so sorry what is it inside of you why do you need a laugh out of somebody why do you need that validation I think I've just grown up with it. I have understand. I've been like in the acting industry since I've been five. So I, which is the acting industry is literally only about validation oh, from other people. <laughs> and like a lot of it's fake. Like I, I like going to sets and they're laughing at their own jokes that they just wrote and everybody on the crew has to laugh. And if you don't laugh, I've seen executive producers yell at people for not oh, laughing. Oh, 100%. But by the way, sometimes, but then sometimes on Austin Alley, when we would film scenes that were in front of a live audience, um, literally nobody would laugh. <laughs> And we had to pause for laughs because they would add a laugh track after on those specific scenes. And we we're like, well, we feel so not talented and so not funny at all. Like, this is humbling. Or even the writers who wrote the jokes are not laughing. But you really have been in this business for, I mean, uh, over what is it now? It's uh, two um, decades. It's on, it's on um, 18 years, Whoa. which is Jeez. kind of nuts. I know. I became an adult uh, from the years. Have how long I've been acting? Eighteen? I don't know, but um, but yes, yes. Uh, knock knock. No, uh, <laughs> but uh, yeah, it's kind of amazing. And so, you know, acting I've been doing it for so long. Um, and then music, music's something I always want to do. And you know, it's such a different business in so many ways. For instance, like you wouldn't ever like professionally. I mean, I say this, but there are kids who are. But you wouldn't necessarily professionally get into music at like five. For actors, like you have five year olds, mm. you've um, babies who get like they start into young. the business. Yeah, yeah, totally. So it's like you can kind of start acting at whatever age you want. I feel like music, you have a little bit of a some sort of. I don't know. You have. I, a few there's a leeway in there. so that I don't yeah. know but um, I also didn't know really who and how to get in the music industry again like so different industries and then I got Austin and Alley and uh, that like opened so many doors because it was about music and I finally you know I got a record deal out of it which that's when I came to see um, you guys yeah. that was like a few years ago <laughs> and then um, and it's it's funny because it's both industries are um, challenging in their own ways. Like for music, there's there are definitely a lot of politics that come into the industry, like the the record label industry part that you don't necessarily have on the acting side. But acting is straight up like you can't work unless people like you. Music, you can always create something. Who cares if someone doesn't like it? You can always go in the and studio put it out. and yeah. put it out. Acting, it's like literally unless you have a lot of money, you can write, you can direct, you have like some sort of person who can film it and you act in it, 
yeah, then you can put it out. But you really don't have that same, your validation, it comes straight up from, from like the people around director. you. Like professionally, yeah. not personally, but from professionally, it's like, it's all about what people think about you. Which, in the acting world, is it more what people think about you than talent sometimes that they judge you on? Well, I guess it's like, it's a, it, it's it's a little, I want to say it's one of the, one of the same, and then I want to say it's kind of not. I mean, you have people who, you can go in and you have dark hair and the director has a dark haired ex that he just broke up with and you remind him of his girlfriend or you remind her of her girlfriend and like all of a sudden um, you're so completely out of the running or someone who had a really bad day and you go in and like I had a bad moment, a bad phone call. So you kind of are on the mercy of like people's subjective feelings. But then of course I always say, you know, getting to the last two or the last three, the final two or final three, you had to have talent to get at that point mm -hmm. for sure. But um, when it gets down to that, I don't think it strictly goes to talent. I think it goes to like how the writers or the director views that character. And if you have the look or the feel of the character, then that's what it really goes down to, if that makes sense. Yeah, no, 100%. Do you feel like... Do you feel like you become a better person from being in the business? Like, um, uh, well, I, you know, I guess that's a funny question. In some ways, I feel like creativity uh, always makes anyone like a more open-minded person. I think for acting, it's funny. I, I feel very in touch with empathy because you have to kind of empathize the different characters you're playing. Um, you know, on the music side, I feel like music is so from your own head and from your own world that it's like such an amazing outlet and anything that I'm feeling, I can kind of put it into my music and I can't really do that in acting. Um, and so acting, I do think you have to make sure you're working on yourself constantly and talking things out because, you know, I did a, a role for a movie that I produced that I feel yeah. like I talked to you about. Yeah, I, I just say, <laughs> yeah. Um, it was, and, it was the hardest role you've ever done, like deepest, right? Yeah, yeah, and it's, um, uh, we just sold it like a few weeks ago. Yes, yes. yes. we're excited. Um, it's about a really kind of dark subject. Um, it's based on this awesome book, but we teamed up with an organization about like this organization is called Equality Now, they're amazing. And they're all about, I'm not gonna give away totally what the movie's about, but they're all about sex trafficking. Um, and mm -hmm. so it's a really kind of dark subject and um, takes place a year after my character's older sister was murdered. And so I had to be definitely in like these pretty dark places. And it is funny how it does kind of affect you. It's like you have to compartmentalize um, and because you have to, but then at the same time that stuff does come up. And so you have to deal with it. Um, music is just kind of like, you're always anything you're feeling in the moment, you're just putting it in your art. And like, that's awesome. Like yeah. it's such an amazing outlet. It's solely from your brain and from your heart. Yeah. Music. Yeah. And acting, you're compartmentalizing constantly because you have to provide the emotion that is right for that character right then and right there. But what version of yourself do you put into a role like the one you just did? Um, for for me, I always put a little bit of myself in the way of like, that's where I guess my um, like respect, for lack of a better word, for empathy comes in, yeah. right? Because you're always kind of putting yourself in those positions. So obviously I, ha I haven't experienced, thank God, such a loss in the way of like my older sister getting murdered. You know what I mean? But you have to put yourself in certain mindsets in certain positions like Echo is very different the character that I played very different for me in the way of like she's pretty quiet she's um because as you guys know I <laughs> am not <laughs> um, knock knock um uh, but she's you know really quiet she's insecure she's um you know uh very um you know kind of doesn't she doesn't have that kind of that light energy about her. She's like not really into making jokes or into like, she's like kind of in a, a in a darker space. Um, but then there's other parts of her that I, I definitely brought to me of like, she's a bit of a perfectionist. She doesn't like to show when she's hurt or like kind of compartmentalizes yeah. in different ways, which I relate to a lot. Um, so 
every character I play, I definitely put a little bit of myself in. Um, and then the things that I'm not, I don't share with the character, I, I, I take out and I kind of think about and I, I reflect on. Um, and it, I think it in that way, in the creative side, it helps me as a person. Of course, on the industry side, you know, the, in, the entertainment industry is nuts. It's so <laughs> weird and nuts and like complicated and and there's parts that are a little gross, you know what I mean? So just that aspect is just kind of a result of the being so taken and enjoying so thoroughly the creative part, you know what I mean? When you're doing a character like this and you're so, you bring so much light to any situation and this character's dark, is it, do you stay in character for long periods of time? Is it hard for you to get out of it when you're done? Yeah, you know, it's funny, it's, um, so my sister and my sister was in the movie as well. She played Shocker, my sister. Um, I mean, Weird. she actually played my mother. No. Um, <laughs> but she has such a different process than I do. So yeah, I like to stay in. So there's a few um, scenes, one scene in particular that like is a really emotional scene where I literally just break down crying in the movie. And so that whole kind of moment of shooting it, I really had to like stay in that space. So I like had headphones on and I listened to a song that like, was like a very emotional song for me and um and you know really just kind of stayed in that space that whole time until the scene was over and when the scene was done and we were done filming it was the last scene of the day you know I really had to kind of like like knowingly try to take me out of that space and like do other things, whether it was like journaling or other things to kind of get me out of there, right? Vanessa, on the other hand, she like is crazy talented in 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 the way of like she can do it on the drop of a hat and and she kind of like takes pleasure in that <laughs> talent to the point where like it makes people uncomfortable in the hilarious way like she'll have a she'll just have a take where she was sobbing and like has tears in her eyes and then they cut they yell cut and she's just like hey uh, you know anyone got some whiskey she wouldn't oh, say that but wow. she would just like she like yeah. just would make a joke right away where everyone's just kind of like uh, you think she's a sociopath a like, hundred percent <laughs> and I think she loves that I That's think a, she's like she uh, um, uh, are you envious of that skill or do you feel like that's a skill that allows you to be less connected from the character or to the character to, to be honest it's funny we have conversations about that all the time because I feel like you know it's just a different process for me if I did that I wouldn't be able to connect with the character as thoroughly I feel like there's always a little bit of a of you're not fully into that character and Vanessa would completely disagree with me Vanessa would be like no I'm like I can see of it I can see it from an intellectual standpoint which means I really kind of get that at, it's just a different way of looking at it um I mean it's it's funny I I find it so fascinating I've been in the you know this industry for so long and I've done acting for so long my mom's an acting teacher and so it's like it's, I sometimes feel bad talking about it with other people because I get really nerdy about it. I'm just like, do you do Meister? No, but I'm like, I'm just like, I, I think it's like a really kind of fascinating thing. Um, but it just comes down to like, everyone has a different process. What was your process on Austin and Allie? Um, you know, it was really dark show. And <laughs> really just, you know, Austin and Allie was just so fun. And Aust Allie was such a similar character to myself that honestly, you know, it, it really was just like having fun so much of the time. Um, I was really playing such a like a, a similar version of myself. Like talk about empathy. I was literally like, it, it's funny, you know, there's an aspect of Allie that's like shy and like has stage fright. And so that I didn't totally relate to in some ways, but in other ways I did. It was like, I completely relate to her on so many aspects. Um, so it was just like, Austin Alley was more about, you know, comedy is a different thing where, you know, you have to be word perfect. So word, or, you know, words and memor memorizing was like key. Um, and then you just always had to deal with like putting being thrown in your face. <laughs> so it was just a completely kind of other thing of managing um, that like, you know, there's different uh, you know, distractions that come into play when you're acting. You know, it sounds funny, but even walking and talking at the same time, hitting your mark while you're walking and talking is like hard. really hard. Um, I'm a little bit used to it because I've done it like, I'm, I'm an old pro. No, but <laughs> I feel like I, I needed like a cigarette or a cigar. Being like <laughs> I'm in take and, a drag. Yeah, totally. Um, but that's like one of the, when you're starting out, that's one of the biggest things you struggle with because it's, you wouldn't think it's hard, but it's really tough. And so for Austin and Allie, I had a bunch of that. Plus, literally, I would have pudding thrown in my face. <laughs> um, so like dealing with that and still like acting and 
trying not to break when you have pudding in your face, um, was had its own kind of set of challenges. And and it's also like you're also on the set. You the show ran for a while. You get to know everybody. Is there ever a level like of comfort that takes over everybody on the cast? See, for me, that's like a a benefit, but also kind of an issue because I just get so attached. Yeah. So on any project, but especially on Austin Alley when we filmed four seasons and it was like five years, um, of course there was such like an attachment and a comfort. And you know, by the end, the last season I was out of school, I was out of, out of high school so I could work more hours, um, which the crew kind of hated. <laughs> the crew's like, wait, just like go back to like do another year. Um, <laughs> Because then literally that last season, we were just spending like 14, 15 hour days with each other. But does comfort lead to lack of preparedness? Like, had there been days where like somebody on set wasn't ready or somebody didn't know their lines or... I've definitely worked on projects where that could be the case. I think Austin Alley, we were, um, we were all kind of professionals in our different way of like, we knew we wanted to make an awesome episode and an awesome, you know, show at the end of the day. And so we would work pretty hard to do that. I would really though, like attribute that to um, one of our cast members, everyone really worked hard, but Kalem who played Dez was like, the best like from day one to the last day he was always rehearsing and always just kind of like working on his thing and I think it really kind of inspired all of us who were already into that to like continue to really work on it so um of course there were days though when we were like really tired there are some days when we would just like just be laughing so hard and the producers and writers literally wanted to kill us. They were like, okay, cool. Glad you guys are laughing, but like we have a scene to do. And we're like, but uh, uh, this, is so uh, funny. this is so funny. <laughs> totally. We're like, no one thinks it's funny. Um, but yeah, so it was, it, that was just such a fun, fun show to be on. Is- I was going to say, what's going on with the Austin and Alley reboot? Um, I, you know, I have no control over that. I would, I <laughs> would love a reboot over Netflix. We used to joke all the time that we would have like um, a reboot on HBO, and it'd be like <laughs> Austin Alley the later years, and it'd be oh, like man. things went wrong. Like Austin and Alley got married and have like five kids, but like neither, like they're both has-beens. Like Austin's just like like a kind of an alcoholic just like what oh, like kind really of like deep. it got really deep wow. dark and bro. dark um uh, i don't hate it though i'm like guys so we're not really there at that age yet but <laughs> but i would be beyond happy to do some sort of like reunion movie or something like i had the best time with all those people i loved working on the show i love the character and it was awesome that i like love music so much and the whole show is about music together. so it was like amazing is there a moment from that show that you that's on record in an episode that you wish could be washed away um ooh that is a fantastic question we had a chilly episode um and not just there was like like chilly explosions <laughs> my character had like all this crazy stuff happen to her where like um I had like a red face and I had cement blocks on my feet and you know just Pudding yeah. wasn't in that episode. but the Chili cr- was. Chili was. <laughs> Even worse. Um, and the crazy thing about the chili was like, um, they like got on people like in one of the scenes and they got on some of the extras and like were in hours and hours filming and the extras started getting like reactions from it. <gasps> like literally like everything turned out fine, but they were like getting like their skin was getting irritated. And so we're like. I'm like, oh my god, they're going to have to lose their limbs now. But, um, <laughs> but like, it was like kind of bad. We're like, we. Uh, I say we. I had no control over this. I'm like, we had to do this. But like, basically, like they like had to be excused and everything, and like wash off immediately because they were getting like crazy reactions oh from gosh. the chili. It was nuts. So, so what it was you like, reshoot the same scene. No, we just had to keep going. It was. Uh, it was. It was just. Um, we would change the shot so we didn't see like if the extras were there or not. You know what I mean? Crazy. Nuts. How'd you look with uh, chili on your face? Um, not my favorite. Like, I, I actually didn't have chili on my face. I had a rash. Like, my character literally had, like, a pink face. Like, a pink rash. Um, so I looked hot. Great. Oh, yeah. I assume so. Yeah. Nice. Sounds hot. All right. Me. That is the record out now. Yes. I'm, you know, you were talking about, like, uh, the show you're doing for Radio Disney and that it's uh, very all about you, which, when I first heard the name of the song, I thought it was going to be all about you. And... 
it, it kind of is, but it kind of Do you of have isn't. the song, by the way? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, cool. I just want to make well, sure I have it on my <laughs> iPad just in case, because I'm like... She, I'm doing- hold on. <laughs> she has it on her iPad because she doesn't have an iPhone. Don't worry about it. She uses her flip phone, so everywhere you go, Laura Morano whips out her iPad, and this is her. It's not this, that it's, big. It's, oh, it's close to it. Not. Half the size of that. It's, it's huge. It's not that big. It really is. It fits in my purse. It's the only thing she uses is how she communicates with the outside world. Well, I mean, I'm, I'm figuring it out, guys, well, okay? Well, flip phone records is <laughs> yes. going to be a deal. <laughs> Come on, you're known for your flip phone now. Yes. Why do yes. you have a flip phone still? Um, why not? Okay. Uh, I mean, that's, a, that's a great <laughs> answer. I can't argue with it. I just love it. I love my flip phone, and I'm I'm like so. There's a lot of reasons, and there's good reasons, by the way. But I'm also like so against change in some ways, where I'm just like, well, I've just always had it, so like, why change now? <laughs> because it's 2018. That's fine. Don't worry about it. She's an iPad. She's good. She's, she's good. I'm she's still connected. connected. The, yeah. issue, the issue is she needs Wi-Fi everywhere she goes. Because no, I actually don't. I have cellular service on my iPad. Oh my <laughs> like, god. That's Just ridiculous. get an iPhone. <laughs> Don't worry about it, guys. <laughs> okay, I'm gonna tell a story real quick, and then we'll get back to the record. We ended up at a strip club once together. Don't worry about it. And we spent. It was not a strip club. It was a burlesque club. Okay, okay burlesque club. Let's Different. specify. Different. We, we had the year. time of our lives. It was really quite an experience. Really, this artistic d- dances and movements, and sisters on her iPad. Literally, like d- the iPad is there in front of the freaking stage. She's gazing up, using her iPad. Well, I was like answering emails. It. I still, you know, just because you're at a burlesque club doesn't mean you're not done. You know, you don't not, stop working. Don't stop working. Obviously. Um, shout out to the one girl who like had her heel above her head. And it's really impressive. It was crazy. I mean, that was like Cirque du Soleil kind of situation. I really enjoyed that evening. Um, you're time. making it sound now. Where way weirder and slightly creepier than it actually was. It was like well, see, it was that we had a I great really, time. It was fun. I really enjoy that evening. No, um, it, was it, was, <laughs> it was an experience. I had never been to I a never, burlesque club. Same, same. I was like Zach and I were both like we have no idea what to expect. And they're real artists. Like they're incredible. It's pretty. It's pretty awesome. And athletes. Like have you ever been to a real strip club? No. Oh, that's impressive. Uh, I've been I, to one. I don't know. I feel like there would be a level that's like I would be a little. Um, grossed out not like grossed out but just feel a little gross of like guys just being like do give me a lap dance and like and even vice versa on a girl strip club or like Mm. a guy strip you know guys are stripping and girls kind of awing i'd be like ah this just feels a little a little strange but i do know both men and women who like love on the stripper (laughs) side (laughs) and they feel very empowered by it um, I just feel I wouldn't feel empowered sitting there, if but, that makes sense. Totally but yet understood. the burlesque club, I was like, go! I was like, you got these girls. Yeah, it's like a, it was like a different level of class. And um, they, you, I'm listen, very prepared to talking about strip clubs. Listen, That's so you try to get through that. They, it's beautiful. I'm like story of my life. Just I have such an I for someone who loves talking so much and who talks for a job, I have a hard time talking in a weird way. I'm like, the one thing I gotta give you credit on is that you'd never stutter. You you can Do keep I? going. Are you sure about that? Yes. I feel like I stutter all the time. In fact, uh, now I'll, if I hear it, I'll point it out. In fact, I've actually become really insecure about it. Like, um, no. like a month ago, my brain was not working. I was not sleeping. And I had to do these interviews and talk to people, and I just kept stuttering. I was like, and I, like, I, well, cause I can't stutter on cue, so I, <laughs> that's not what I sounded like. But I was just, I could not think, and I kept stuttering, and I was like, oh my god, it's happening. And my brain is exploding. But I didn't get any ums from you so far in this conversation. I don't use ums, but I do have words that I. What's your crutch? On. You know, I have oh, you yeah. know a bunch. Um, there's an um. I have like. I definitely do like as a valley girl. I, I, every, I think I do actually a lot of crutches, but I just talk so much that, that you, you don't notice. That's what I was going to say. Yeah, I you think, talk so, th- there's no room to put them in. That's I it. think if you literally look verbatim at what I'm saying, you'd be shocked. <laughs> I, I think somehow I sound more eloquently than I actually am, which even the word I just said or the sentence I just said, <laughs> I, yeah, I don't doesn't know make sense. Meant. But um, I feel the same way. Of, I'm actually really short and I feel just like, I, people People think I'm tall, and I don't know why, because I'm really short, but I think I like, you don't think I'm as small as I am. I'm just good at faking stuff, I feel, <laughs> is really just. Hey, hey, fake it till you make it. Amen. Yeah. And you've made it, so. It's working. Well, trying. <laughs> Music. <laughs> Strip club, wait, sorry. Um, <laughs> sorry, beautiful human. I had to interrupt the interview to tell you about my favorite toothbrush. 
Quip. I use it. My mom uses it. My grandma uses it. Oprah uses it. Why wouldn't you use it? It really is the best toothbrush out there. This thing is backed by over 20,000 dental professionals. That sounds like I'm lying to you, but that is fact. 20,000 dental pros say Quip is for you. Plus, it's really the best toothbrush. This thing has sensitive sonic vibrations. So you're never going to brush too hard because when you brush too hard, your gums bleed and that's not good for anything that's going on in there. So why would you do that? Brush with Quip. It's the way to go. Quip starts at only $25. And when you go to getquip.com slash sang, you're going to get a free refill pack when you buy a toothbrush. That's like great. By the way, like you can get refill packs with your Quip because sometimes like the heads on your toothbrush, you, you want to swap them out for health purposes. Quip will hook you up with free refill packs. You'll keep the base of your toothbrush. Just put another head right on there. It's magic. Getquip.com slash sang. Getquip.com slash sang. Buy yourself a Quip toothbrush. You'll never brush the same again. I promise you. Okay, let's get back to the interview. Even though I really want to brush my teeth right now. The song is not selfish at all. It's it's your love for somebody else and you hoping that they're thinking about you because you're thinking about them. Totally. And you want it to be a mutual thinking about each other. Exactly. It's that idea um, of when you are so into somebody and you're in the kind of beginning stages of something and you're just dying to know, are they thinking about you? And... Is this written from personal pers- experience for sure? Yeah, yes. your perspective <laughs> as it was happening, or did you like close out this chapter, reflect, and then write a, a little bit of that? So I've had the weirdest two years of my life in so many aspects of my life. But I wrote this song last October, uh, so it's literally been a year, and uh, it was a little bit when I was writing it, reflecting on a period with a guy of. I would just think about him all the time. Ooh. And I was like, <laughs> do you say ooh? I say ooh. Uh, I thought you said, I couldn't tell if you said who or ooh. And I was like, uh. We'll get to the who in a second. <laughs> um, but like, I was thinking about him all the time. And I just, and there was no reason necessarily for him to think about me because we weren't even talking. But I, it turns out that he was thinking about me. But it was like kind of a weird moment of my life where it was just like I couldn't stop thinking about someone and we were not talking like at all so I just felt like a really the song is low-key I feel a little bit stalkery because I'm just like I think about you all the time so do you think about me (laughs) (laughs) Ah. (laughs) exactly like that (laughs) I'm sold okay so are you writing this or thinking these things while you're in a relationship with somebody else or had you closed out on a relationship and then these thoughts crept in? You know, I think it was, it, to be honest, it was a little complicated. It was like, I think I was in a relationship with someone else and I met someone else and mm-hmm. I was like, kind of was thinking about them, but I was also still thinking about the person I was with. Um, and so I had no idea what was going to happen and things kind of like fell off with the person that I was with. And so in the meantime, it was kind of like, well, this person I was thinking about and that I'm still kind of thinking about, I wonder if there's anything there or anything um, happening. And then, you know, it turned out that there was, so. Who makes that first move? Um, It's complicated. He kind of did actually. So he, I'm just kind of the worst because <laughs> I like, I do not, um, I'm just so bad at telling people how I feel. Like, really, really, really terrible. Um, I, I, like, hide behind. I think it's just, even when we were talking about before, compartmentalizing. And and I definitely had feelings for him, but I was not going to say it. I was not going to be the first person to say it. And I'm, I'm very quick, I think, when I kind of have feelings for someone, my instant, uh, you know, Reaction is to like friend zone them to be like, <laughs> hey, you're a great friend. Uh, we're <laughs> friends, right? I love being friends with you. Where any normal person would be like, oh wow, so she is really not into me. Like, um, and that's the exact opposite. So, but I, and so I couldn't really tell with this person if there were feelings or what was happening. Sometimes I would feel like there were feelings that were mutual, and other times I'd be like, I have no idea what's going through his head. And then he, Uh, I was like teasing him one day and he kind of just like had a whole like speech prepared about like, hey, 
I'm really into you and I think I'm falling for you. And I'm Whoa. like, whoa. We haven't, nothing has even happened. Like, we haven't even had a conversation. But you made it clear that you're friends and you like being friends with him. Totally. To- I mean, literally, like, legitimately nothing had happened besides, like, friendship. And it was already, he was like, I'm falling for you. And I was like, oh my God. And I didn't say anything back. <laughs> Good. <laughs> of Good. course. Excellent. I was like, okay, thank you for telling me. <laughs> thank you for your prepared words and your remarks. Well done. <laughs> yeah, it was really bad. So do you, process his speech and then get back to him yes minutes later hours later days later a day later and actually we got dinner the next day and um we still didn't talk about it <laughs> we got sushi and sugar fish and we were like literally not talking about it. we talked about everything else because i could just like talk about anything else with this person and then um i i went to go hang out with a few other friends of mine like kind of in the neighborhood and then i went back to hang out he was at a bar with his friends and so i went back to the bar to kind of hang out and his friends left and finally it was a little awkward finally he was like so (laughs) how are you like what's up and so i i kind of loosely um put it in you know like subtle words of being like oh i'm good i'm just like about to do this and do that and like yeah i like you it's fine and then you know and like <laughs> just kind of like really like put it in um so deeply in there so deeply and still by the way um after that night like nothing really kind of happened and so we it was like a few months before anything happened between us well and are you still with them today? Um, yeah, you know, I might be. I don't know. Maybe it was fine. Cool, whatever. <laughs> <laughs> I think I know this person. I, I think you know this person too. <laughs> What's his name? Um, it well, if you would see it, um, spelling wise, you would mispronounce it. Ooh, that's a clue. <laughs> <laughs> that is a but clue. Really narrowed it down. <laughs> but it's a really, it's a really kind of classic name. Um, Miguel. <laughs> no. How would you mispronounce it? M- Miguel. Michael? I'm just trying to figure out some names here. I want to figure out who this is. You keep thinking. Cursing in your song. Yes. Yeah, you wow, use the S-H-I-T is. word. I do. Say it right now. <sighs> <laughs> <laughs> it's funny because I actually do say that one a lot. And I say it, um, I get made fun of all the time because I'm the biggest overreactor on the small. When really crazy bad things are happening, I am like really calm and really like, okay, we can problem solve. I'm like quick to problem solve. But when the smallest thing happens where I'm like, and so I'll be like, what, what happened? I'm like, oh, I forgot my jacket in the car. And like, it's literally not a big deal no, at all. Just go get it. Totally. It's like, you can literally just go get it right there. Um, no, because I get frustrated with myself because I forgot it. That's or, what I'm saying. Like a little, like the, you're right. The tiniest the thing. The tiniest thing. Idiot. Literally, I get I get very intense about myself. I'll just be like, oh man, come on. You should have gotten that jacket. You know what I mean? Yes, I did. It's too well. Too uh, well. So, <laughs> did it naturally end up in the lyrics? Yeah, for sure. In fact, I'm like, I, you know, obviously I come from some sort of platform that is very yeah. engaged with children and engaged with kind of a young audience. But it's been a while since I've been on the show to the point where I think, you know, fans who grew up with the show are older and using like- the SH and word. They're using the SH word. Um, but, you know, for me, it was, it's just always about authenticity. Always, 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 which I laugh because earlier I was just saying I fake eloquency. Um, <laughs> but like really like on the creative side, I wouldn't want to put anything out that didn't relate to me or relate to my life in any sort of way. And so it made sense in the lyric. It made sense. I would say it in real life, yeah. you know, in that same week. Uh, no, it was actually a few months before, but I was kind of like in a writing camp situation. And there was like a lyric in question that I was a little bit like, I wouldn't say this. Like it, it was. And so, you know, like, but it rhymed really well with this other line and it was kind <laughs> of edgy. And but I was very. I'm obviously when I'm writing, I'm like, I wouldn't say certain things when you're collaborating with someone like it's funny. People are going to bring their own kind of experiences and words and things into like the room, which is awesome. It's what you need. But at the end of the day, it's I'm the one singing it and I'm the one coming from my personal experience. So I'm very kind of uh, aware of of what feels genuine, authentic to me. And so this felt very authentic. I have to say I have another song that I'm not really quite sure what to do with yet. That's like pretty explicit like not in like a gross dirty way which I have no problem with if that like if that floats your boat then you know what <laughs> do what I listen to the songs but I'm like for me um, I use like words that I wouldn't necessarily I couldn't imagine myself using them in a song so I have no idea what to do but with it but you chose to record it anyway 
because it felt very authentic to me. Wow. Give us what? What are the words? Um, I'll save that. I'll I'll save that for a hot minute. But like, it's a it's it's definitely a little bit. I I shudder to use the word edgy because I feel like it has this connotation of like edgy. Like I really want to relate to the edgy crowd and I want to be hip. You know what I mean? Like I feel like it's just like a little gross. Yeah. Um, but it's it's a little bit more mature than anything I've ever put out for sure. And you're your own boss, label exec, A and R promotion. Yes, you are the sole CEO of Flip, Flip Phone, Phone Re- Records. Re- yes, I am. I'm working with. Get a business uh, card, sister. I mean, get ready. I have them. No, oh, I'm going to um, get you a case made for your iPad. I just keep wanting to play with this cat. By the way, it. I Everybody just like does. we are making eye contact. Um, <laughs> but I'm working with this awesome music distribution company called Symphonic. Cool. So they're helping with the distribution side for like putting on iTunes, putting on Spotify, um, any of that kind of sort of stuff. So, because obviously that I literally have no idea how to do. And I don't think a regular a regular old schmo can't just like no. put a song up on Spotify. But um, yeah, it's I'm my own uh, boss, which is terrifying, but so exciting. The, cool. All the pressure is on you. If it succeeds, it's you. If it fails, it's, it's me, you. It's me, totally. And so it's something that I feel so connected with like and I think the stakes are so much higher now so I think there's a part of me that's like gonna kind of just push it with everything I got that's you know? it like maybe before you're like oh, do I have to do this totally do I need to take the extra two hours today maybe but now it's like you got it like I mean I think that, yeah I think I'm I was always I'm always into like doing whatever I can to make something work but now it's like Stakes are high, so I'm like going to create opportunities to make things work. That's you don't wait for opportunities to come around. Exactly, I create them, Zach. Boom, bam, boom, me ow. (laughs) There's a cat here. In case anyone's just listening to this and not watching, so (laughs) how many times do you say me in this song? Um, I have. Uh, let's see, I haven't counted. A trillion? But I think approximately around a trillion. Um, <laughs> did you see the lyrics? I, tw- yes. I posted out lyrics. And I'm so, looking at that right now. So, yeah, there's a lot of me's. And there's like, you know, I recorded the harmonies and the doubles. So if we want to even put how many times I say <laughs> me in the song, it's just an unreal amount. Who'd you write it with? Um, uh, a group of producers, a pair called Alex and Alex, oh. which let me tell you, it was a little confusing sometimes talking to them on the phone because I didn't know which Alex was which. Um, <laughs> they're awesome though. A wonderful, wonderful, awesome lady uh, named Chelsea Lena, and I'm obsessed with her and I've written a few other songs with her. She's like awesome. She vocal produced um, Love Lies. Oh, wow. Oh, nice. Yes. And so she, I remember she was like telling me about this session. Uh, that she had where like Khalid and Normani walked in and she was like she had no idea what she was like doing with the song she was called to help out and she was like oh this is awesome and now it's like number one on pop radio huge huge. only getting bigger 100% so um, she's awesome and then an awesome guy named David Brooke whoa so okay I I met Chelsea beforehand I'd worked with her a bit but Alex and Alex and David I had met that day is the song done before you see it or do you write it with them in the the studio yeah I write it with them in the studio for sure cool and you tell them your story Yes. So I had a I had a journal that I brought with me where I was like, this is what happened. Cute. These are like my ideas. <laughs> I felt very arts and crafty, like second grader, but it's fine. Um, but like uh, one of my favorite parts was we're writing the song, we're working on it. And Alex, one of the Alex's was just like in a random state, um, like uh, in America, not like state of mind. Um, <laughs> uh the like a week before and he'd recorded birds and he was like i don't know man i just have like birds recorded and i'm like oh we're putting this in the song so in the chorus there's birds there are birds if you listen so it's like a breakdown chorus well it's like you know you go to the first pre and it goes in the chorus and there's birds in the in the chorus that you can really hear which does mother nature get a feature or a credit um no i really i'm just kind of sampling them um. so i'm like <laughs> i haven't even told them but you should let mother nature know that she's not getting publishing on this i just feel like i am like a bird um and i i just go into <laughs> like yeah, like totally. bird. I wanna fly away. that was my favorite song ever i have a weird joke with people that i am a bird it's fine it's and by what kind of bird i'm just a bird 
<laughs> Generic bird. Are you a pigeon? So I have a thing with a friend where I'm mama bird and she's baby bird. So you eat her food and then put it in her mouth? Like actually, that's like, I'm not in real life, but like that's our joke. The uh, joke is like, she'll be like, I'm hungry. It's really weird. Um, <laughs> She didn't tell her now husband about it for a really long time. Yeah, probably. Um, but the joke Good was idea. like, she'd be like, I'm hungry, mama. And she's like 10 years older than I am. And I'd be like, okay, hold on. Blah, 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 blah. <laughs> and it was hilarious to us. <laughs> Um, uh, but probably not to the rest of the world. Yeah, like you, you don't know if it's like just disturbing or like some weird like. I'm not sure. We're, in, we're she was a part of my mom's like uh, theater, so we're drama kids. So okay. I have that part of my personality too, where I'm a weird drama kid. But like that's I don't know. Like so, it's a weird drama kid thing, Zach. Okay, and that's okay. So back off. I feel very comfortable <laughs> with weird okay, drama kids. <laughs> What happened with all the songs and stuff you've recorded over the past few years that never came out? So I actually own all of them. Oh, whoa. Um, Wait, which did you is, buy them? Um, well, my big machine deal was, uh, that was actually part, the part of the deal was that I was responsible for buying the songs and oh. they were responsible for promo. Cool. Um, so I had that. Um, and then on Warner Brothers, I ended up, yeah, getting all of the songs were like demos beforehand and so they didn't own them and so I like I it's kind Sweet. of kind of amazing so I feel really lucky about that because there's a lot of artists I have who don't that doesn't happen so I have friends who have been shelved and get like screwed over and then their whole catalog is sitting never released and totally they're so, creatively forced to do it again it's like a, it's traumatizing a hundred percent and it's funny because like there's always I think a bright side to look at things, right? Mm -hmm. And so there's some, a lot of weird, complicated stuff that happened in the past two years, but there's a lot of amazing stuff that, that you know, I kind of think about that I'm like, I'm really lucky that this happened. And so owning the songs is like amazing. So a lot of the songs, but that was also part of it where I was like, okay, you know, the songs I did with Big Machine are now like two years old and they feel pretty old and don't really feel authentic to who I am now. But the songs I did with Warner Brothers are awesome, and I'm like so excited about them. They feel really authentic, but I'm so nervous they're going to get old. So I'm just kind of like, I want to release them, them now. Get them out now. They are really relatable to my life right now. Just like, Boom. ah. Do you have a full album worth of stuff that you can just put out if you wanted to? Um, yes. And are you going to do that? Well, I have an EP coming out. Uh, um, date? <laughs> um, I don't want to say the date yet, but it's, it'll be in January. Cool. Oh, wow. Yes. Soon. So, yes, yes. So, and I have a date, but I, I always feel like it's a bit of, I don't know, me personally, not a letdown, but I feel like when you have it's a date so far in advance, it's a little bit like, okay, cool. Like, oh, but will exciting. you release another song before the EP? Yes. I'm releasing another song in a few weeks. Cool. Yes. Ooh. And it's a little bit different. It's a, it's a really kind of like emotional song. So, it's like the most emotional song I've ever done, which makes sense because I've only put out like three songs. So. <laughs> <laughs> are, the, are the songs you're putting out now from Warner? Um, these two are. There's a few that I did on Big Machine. When you wouldn't mean from Warner? No, like, like the ones you're releasing now. Like were they made during your Warner Brothers period? Yeah, most of them. But there's a few that were made actually in the Big Machine period. Cool. Yeah. Okay, I think a lot of people in the music industry feel like sometimes actors and actresses, when it's time for them to make music, they lack the ability to reach within themselves because they're so busy putting themselves into other people's emotions. For sure, that's a great point. That you, you lack this ability to understand your own. But there's obviously something super different about you. You're super aware of yourself and you understand yourself. And Well, I think also there's this um, kind of mentality also against someone who has... Uh, who's known from something or has some sort of a, a, yeah, a I, like, I hate to use this word but if someone stigma. has celebrity or like or, you that know but sense. there's like a stigma a, around that kind of idea of like they want to make music because music's a really personal intimate thing and mm -hmm. I think you can't really um, fake it you can't fake your connection with it um, you know it's complicated because obviously you want the music to rock and be awesome and so because of that you know I think you always want to you know if you're signed with a label, you're gonna they're gonna want to enlist help on writers or producers to make songs for you, which can be amazing and awesome. But for me, I felt, you know, from the beginning that it's it's really tough for me to relate to a song, uh, not just emotionally but even vocally, on a song that I didn't write. I think there are there definitely are, um, you know, that's not the case all the time, I and I think that that happens but because of this idea of like okay we want your songs you know you constantly hear when you're at a label and especially if you have some sort of like celebrity aspect that that like I feel 
to be honest with you, I think a big reason why I was signed to Big Machine was my celebrity aspect, which was always a little bit of like a a little weird blow to my ego because I'm like, but I'm an artist. I'm like, <laughs> respect me as an artist. Um, they think it's going to be easier because you have a following. Totally, which is, you. by the way, I think not always. It's harder. <laughs> it's harder because you have that prejudged, yeah. you have this like judgment of like. Selena Gomez and Miley broke that mold and no, it's, totally. it's well, been and also, really long since then. Totally. And also it took, people don't realize, it took, it takes time yeah. still. You know what I mean? I can't, anyway, I can get on that forever. But I think you're when you're at a label, you're at this idea of like, well, you need to have a top 10 song. Mm -hmm. This needs to be like, uh, like it ha needs to be a banger. It needs to be like all these words of describing, <laughs> smash, like a, smash is the big one, right? Which a hundred percent agreed, like you want your song to be commercially successful, but then you stop yourself from releasing music. And I think that's the biggest mistake you can do as an artist is just not release music. You know, I think, and you want the song to be a song you're proud of, of course. You don't want to just release any song. Um, but when you kind of uh, limit yourself of like putting en out any music because you're waiting for the one, you could be waiting for years and years and years. And, and it can never come. And it, and it could never come. Or in some cases, I've heard the one existed three years prior, but they didn't realize it was the one, you know. A, a hundred recently. million gazillion percent. Like this idea of this legend of like the smash, the instant smash, the moment you hear it, that there are a few, mm -hmm. but it is so rare. And most of the songs that I've become fans of, the first time I hear it, I'm like, oh, this is a good song. I wouldn't necessarily say like, oh my God, this is a smash. But how many songs are on my iTunes or on my Spotify or anything where I think they're awesome songs that aren't like necessarily like, I'm peeling my face back because I'm so excited with how incredible this song is. Um, so I think the biggest mistake you do is not release. And I think, unfortunately, when you are an actor or an actress or a, some sort of known person or something, there's that pressure and then comes that pressure is the like idea of like, well, I have to wait to release a song. And then the more you wait, the less credible you become as an artist because you don't have music out. Yeah. And it's this weird cycle of, for me, I'm at a point where, and now I can kind of control it, where I'm like, I just want to release. I want to release all this stuff that I have. Um, because also, to me, it's not about having it do incredibly well the first week it comes out. For me, it's all a build and it's all about like, I'm in it for kind of the long game. And so I'm not really looking for an instant success game on music. I I, I, I just love it you're playing, so, so much. You're playing life, you're playing long. And I think not having a body of work out there is a mistake, even if it's not like bodies of work don't do well. We're in a single, a single kind of based industry, yeah. which we are. You know, for me, I'm like, but I want to, I, these songs are really cohesive and they tell a whole story and I really want to show that off. You know what I mean? So. Yeah, a hundred percent. And having him, uh, getting this music out there gives people a chance to check out your stuff and then allows you to make more music, right? Totally. Exactly. You can't and that's make all I more do. with other people or, or collaborate with others or get that next hit without putting out what you have. Totally. A hundred percent. How's your winking problem, winking problem going? Um, right. It's still there. It's, <laughs> it's still here. Um, you just wink randomly? It's fine. Don't worry about it. Oh. Okay. Um, <laughs> Okay, so okay, wait. What? So my uh, <laughs> so I my video is coming out uh, really soon. Uh, cool. Like actually, I think. Did you direct it? Um, no, that would've been awesome. I'm I'm a control freak for sure, but like I also know my limits. So I like I write the treatments, and then I'm just like, and make my dream come true to the director. <laughs> but this director I've worked with a bunch. His name's Cole Walliser. He directed Boombox. He directed okay. another video we worked on. Uh, he's awesome. So I knew I could kind of trust him in it. Um, but in the cut that I have, I literally for one of the choruses, I like. And, you know, I say me a bunch. And for one of the me's, you better believe I wink. And I don't, I, guys, I black out when I wink. I don't remember winking on the day. I don't remember it happening. It's just something where it's a part of me and I can't let it go. <laughs> I wink so randomly so many times. It's so embarrassing. I, and I wink at like parents all the time. That's really weird. It's and really you should weird. see a doctor. I mean, that can't be it's good. It's not a twitch though. I know it's not a twitch. It is like. How do you, how do you know? Because it's not a twitch. Do, I, so you actively know when you're winking? It's really weird to explain. I actively know it, but it's just like a, like an innate kind of like, it is a choice, but it's not a choice. But like guys. OCD. It's not. So like, you, yeah, like, like uh, you know, the people who have to like knock the, on the door four times or like. Yeah, but that's not, but I don't have off. to wink at certain points. I just like, I, you know, I'll like be like, oh, hey, Zach, nice to see you. Whoa. Um and just like that was seductive. Like that's a know, wrong that's, message. But that's the weird thing because I do it to parents all the time that's and I do it's good. like I it's weird. I'm not proud of it. So what goes through your head after you've winked at someone? You're like, Do you I apologize? I go, 
I just winked. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god, this is the worst thing ever. Uh, if there's any uh, neurologists out there who think that there might be something here, reach out. We start with uh, medical, we end with medical. In the middle, know, literally, is acting, music, and life. A lot of love to you, friend. Ah, uh, you're the best. I'm really happy that you entered my life years ago, and we've gotten to we'll work together again at the AMAs, but we've worked together in the past. I know. I'm so happy. You're the best, and you guys are the best too. And I'm like, you're the best. You're flipping awesome. <laughs> I mean, we're you're fine. You're, we've yeah, worked you're together a bunch. Um, <laughs> 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 yes, no. I know. Jen's like, have we really? <laughs> you know what I mean. Yeah, 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 of um, course. But thank you guys so much for having me. Well, and always. thank you so, 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 so much. Our door's always open. You're so, 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 so welcome. I mean, so, 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 so welcome. EP album next singles. Please come by whenever you want. Yes, I will. I'm just going to just like not even have an invite. I'll just be like, Hey guys, you I'm don't here. Need oh Seriously, gosh, come to our donuts. We know where we live now. So. Um, <laughs> AMAs, we're doing that thing. So yes, uh, October 9th. That's right. YouTube Music. Watch it. Woo! <laughs> Thanks. <laughs> what was that? Sort of drunk. <laughs> <laughs> I really hope you enjoyed that conversation. If you did, please subscribe and also check out our podcast. There's a link in the description. And also comment and like and do things. Other interviews are on the screen somewhere. So click them. Thanks for watching.